It's hard to believe, but to this day, some people still think Texas is flat, which only proves they've never been to West Texas. They've never seen the towering giants rising up from the desert floor, never breathed the crisp Texas mountain air, never stood over a mile and a half above sea level, and been so close to the sky they could almost touch the Lone Star itself. Yeah, Texas ain't flat, amigo. Especially not our destination today. Davis Mountains! This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. So most states are lucky if they have just a piece of a single mountain range. But here in Texas, we have over a half a dozen individual mountain ranges. The leftovers, or the little pieces as the Native Americans used to call them. As if the great creator made two major mountain ranges in the US and then took all those leftover little pieces and dumped them here in Texas. There's the Guadalupe Mountains, the Chisos Mountains, the Chinati Mountains, the Franklin Mountains, and then where we're tripping today, which is one of the tallest mountain ranges in Texas and one of the most beautiful in the world. Well, in my humble opinion. The Davis Mountains cover a region of about 50 square miles sitting in the middle of West Texas with the heart residing proudly in the mountain town of Fort Davis. Now we've tripped this way before and visited Fort Davis. It's a great town with a historic fort, mountain biking, world-class stargazing, rattlesnakes, and milkshakes. But we're not here to retrace our steps. No, no, this is an episode not about the town, but about the mountains. And we're gonna kick off this day in the Davis Mountains at a state park of the same name, covering over 2,500 acres with the sort of rough terrain and cactus that epitomize the Davis Mountains. But what's truly unique about this park is that tucked in the back is one of the most distinctive hotels in Texas, known as the Indian Lodge. Built literally into the side of the mountains, this adobe style lodge dates back to the 1930s when it was built by the Civilian Conservation Corps, that is the CCC. Men employed by the government during the Great Depression and who built some of our state park's most iconic structures. And here's current park superintendent, Wanda Olszewski. I'm so used to the CCC structures at the other state parks that are all like, you know, sandstone, just stacked rocks. This is totally different. Part of the purpose of this, the design of it, was to make it blend into the environment, to, okay. to, to make it very natural looking. Uh -huh. And, you know, a lot like a Pueblo or an Indian village, that was actually the first name of the building. Okay. Indian Village. Indian Village. The stark white against the really rugged rocks in the background, you kind of, I don't know, you feel something here. It has an amazing atmosphere and just a presence that actually, you know, people love to this day. This has been a huge tourist destination for Fort Davis for many, many, many years. What these men did, without the help of modern tools nonetheless, is simply amazing. This is our historic lobby and it's a great place to see the amazing architecture of the Indian Lodge. Yeah, you could kind of see the exposed beams, how they built this. You know, there's blacksmiths in the CCC camp that were local area experts that made the ironwork that you can oh, see here on yeah, the beams. Oh yeah, these braces. These are river cane from along the Rio Grande. And you can see the just immense width of the walls here. The adobe bricks that are 12 to 18 inches wow. wide walls. A foot to a foot and a half of like mud and straw, basically. Yeah, it was a 40 pound bricks made of clay and straw and just thousands and thousands of them. Probably wow. Was, yeah. It's a lasting testament to what hard work can do. Now we got a hard day of hiking ahead of us, and I'm already as hungry as a bear. Well, luckily, there's a restaurant on site for folks just like me. The Black Bear Restaurant is named after a time when the CCC camp had a pet baby black bear. Not recommended these days. 
But this place certainly honors the legacy of the CCC with tasty camp-inspired food. And here's camp cook, Tim Hardy. I'm gonna make you a CCC breakfast. All right, okay, so what is this? It starts with everybody's favorite, bacon. Of course, man, uh, absolutely. Some potatoes, two pancakes. There you go. How do you like your eggs, Chet? Uh, let's do over easy. Over easy, you yeah, got it. Yeah, man, the boy needs to, you know, haul rocks and cut wood all day. Exactly. And build something. Yeah. I like it. Absolutely yours. <laughs> all right. You know, there's just something about being at camp that makes me want this exact meal. But we're just gonna all over it. Oh yeah, and homemade syrup, nonetheless. Oh, that's good. We're gonna eat a lot of that. I can only hope that the CCC boys who built the Indian Lodge ate half this good. You know, I've really got my own CCC. Chet, champion chewer. Cue the music. <laughs> Here it is again, folks, for your viewing enjoyment. It's a thing of beauty, isn't it? <laughs> you know, if you think about it, eating in front of people is a really big part of my job, and I take it very seriously. <laughs> oh. I've often said that if I disappear off the face of the planet, I'm somewhere in the Davis Mountains. Don't come looking for me. Y'all just find a new host, keep doing the show. Well, don't disappear while we're in the car. <laughs> and then, Richie, I'm proud of you. <laughs> Richie, I'm sorry you uh, lost your place. <laughs> <laughs> he had the better beard. <laughs> he does, definitely right. the better beard. Dude, I feel like you just trimmed it down. Yeah, and now it's like it was. It was like yours last night, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Something about the West Texas yes. air just sort of like. <laughs> The West Texas air is pretty special. Now I've been to the Davis Mountains maybe a dozen times or so, and every time I've been drawn to the horizon, to a certain domed peak and an adventure yet unhad. So every time I've come to the Davis Mountains, that tall peak back there in the distance has called out to me. You see that little nub in the background? That is Baldy Peak, otherwise known as Mount Livermore. It's the tallest point in the Davis Mountains, and I've always said that someday I'm gonna climb it. Well, folks, today is that day. Next stop, top of Baldy. Rising 8,378 feet in the air, Baldy is the fifth highest peak in Texas. You can see it from 50 miles away, but getting to the top is a bit harder, as it sits inside of a 33,000 acre preserve that's carefully stewarded by the Nature Conservancy of Texas. And lucky for all trippers, well, it's publicly open numerous days and weekends out of the year. And today, West Texas education expert Tara Pulaski is going to help me summit my dreams of hiking Baldy. Let's look at our route today. We are at the MacGyver Conservation Center, which is right here. Yep. We will be driving down this road, which is Madera Canyon Road. We'll hike up Livermore Summit the entire way, and then coming down Olympia Chute. So we will have the best vantage point in the whole Davis Mountains. You'll feel like you are on top of the world. All right, I like that. <laughs> yes. Okay. All in all, we're in for about a five mile hike and approximately 2,500 feet in elevation gain. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. Along for the adventure are Kevin, Ben, and Vanessa, who's also with the Nature Conservancy. I mean, this is some of the most pristine wilderness in Texas. And even the ride to the trailhead is exciting. We have turkey tracks. Oh, right cool. here. But what's interesting here too is that right there's here. a predator track, a um, coyote track, <laughs> and it, it's strangely going in the same direction as the turkeys. <laughs> Maybe a there's breakfast. a correlation. <laughs> Coyotes may be fierce. However, there's a bug crawling around everywhere out here that can hold its own. And I'm not sure Ben knows what he's picking up. So these are called bombardier beetles. Okay. Because they literally have a bomb in their booties. Okay. What? And it's about almost 200 degrees. There you go. And they spray it in the face of whatever thing might eat them. Whatever thing. And, that, oh, and I think you're guy. really lucky you didn't just get <laughs> <Yeah>. sprayed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As they say, everything in the desert either pokes, pricks, or stings. 
I mean, these are some of the toughest creatures on Earth. And now that we've made it to the trailhead, well, we're off on foot patrol. This is a very important place in Texas and really in general because it's what we call a sky island. A sky island is when you have a mountain range in the middle of a desert. It almost mm -hmm. looks like a mirage that has just popped out of this flat desert floor. Yeah. And when that happens, the habitats for all kinds of critters just are exponentially more numerous. You can get things like common blackhawks, eagles, Aspen grows, awesome. ponderosa pines, mosses, ferns, and in the middle of all that you might see a cactus to remind you that you're in the middle of <laughs> Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's incredible to ponder, but the Nature Conservancy has over 100,000 acres of public and private land under conservation, meaning you won't see a paved road, power line, or any large-scale development ever built on top of this beautiful piece of earth. This land is wild and will be forever. Whew. My lungs are definitely feeling the altitude. That's for sure. I mean, we're over 7,000 feet, you know, over a thousand higher than the city of Denver. And we're still in Texas, which blows a lot of people's minds. It still blows my mind. With hiking though, man, you gotta take a moment to sort of stop and take it all in. This might be the smoke, you know. Ah, he said it. He said it. No, they're both great, they're both great. <laughs> the Tennessee boy says it. This is pretty awesome. Lucky for my legs, a guy named Dave built a shelter right here. Y'all can green screen me into the top, right? <laughs> Just like go film something. I'll do, the, I'll do the actual part later that I talk up there. We'll see you later. All right, bye guys. But as it turns out, this might not be the best place to catch a nap. Because bears have been in here, as you can see. Oh, what, are there bear tracks? Whoa. I mean, this bear had to be big enough to get... Yes. That's a big bear. <laughs> yeah, we better keep moving. Black bears do roam these parts, as do mountain lions. But both are elusive and never look to attack humans. I mean, there's plenty of better tasted food out here than us. And if you look around, well, there is even food for us, including a bit of nature's medicine cabinet. This is called yarrow. Okay. And it has a chemical in it that actually oh, no. will numb your mouth. Okay. So wait, this is one of the things you make new people to Mount Livermore do. Like it's hazing. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> that is one of the most bitter <laughs> things I've ever put in my mouth. Are you feeling something going on? A little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here we can go climb up to the top of Mount Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Yarrow can actually come in pretty handy in survival situations to numb pain, but no one ever said survival tasted good. We are starting on the stretch that I call heaven's window. <laughs> I know, my legs don't really feel like they're in heaven right now, Sarah. <laughs> <Let me> see. <laughs> see, it's fun. It's always an adventure. You can only see the sky from here. You can't see anything beyond it. It looks like you, if you keep going, you will touch the clouds. Oh, I see. Yeah, we are just like kind of hiking to heaven. Got it. And I think I see heaven on the horizon, AKA Baldy Peak. Whoa, whoa, wait, it's supposed to be closer than that. You said that we were like almost there. What? That is not close. Closer than you think. You know, it's a lot closer than it was when we were at the bottom of the mountain, but it still seems a pretty good distance away. But that's hiking. One foot in front of the other, slow and steady burn, and eventually you will make it there. Stay the course, slow and steady. Here we are, Baldy. Yes. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and now for the final push. Loose lava rock, steep inclines, and four point scrambling. This is why I love climbing mountains. Yeah, baby. Good job, man. Good job, Ben. The Baldy Mountain Boys. Nature unites us, baby. Nature might also kill us. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll be united in death. There's a very real chance. <laughs> Finally, the real payoff, making every hard step worth it. Oh, yeah, yes! Right there. 
Tradition dictates it. Gosh, this is awesome. Wow. Look, over here to our north, you can see the Guadalupe Mountains. And if you look over here to our south, you see Big Bend, the Chisos Mountains. So we are sort of like right here in the middle Sky Island with the other two in Texas to our right and left. There isn't another view on Earth quite like it. And it seems the ladybugs love Baldy as much as we do as they come up here every summer to populate the world with more ladybugs. So sweet. And another reward for our hike, lunch. But there's more to this mountaintop than the views. It turns out Baldy has been a special place for humans for over a thousand years. 1895, uh -huh. two landowners came up and they found this big rock cairn. This was hiding 1,700, at least, stone points. 1,700? Arrowheads. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, you have one. I have one example. Ooh. This is a real point. This is not a replica. But this was just found in 2015 right here. So there's a possibility that there like, are still more up here. Cool. Mm -hmm. Look around. It remains one of the most important archaeological finds in the southwest United States. It's called the Livermore Cache, and it was left up here an estimated 1,500 years ago. But why? These were very important for these people. This is how they got their food. Yeah, so to yeah. make 1,700 of them and leave them here, this was evidently a pretty important place. Because this was such an important place yeah. for the Livermore people, I like to have everyone sit down and do what we call forest bathing okay. or mountaintop <laughs> bathing. We're not actually bathing. With clothes on. Yes. It's a very, okay, yes. all right, it's a safe practice. Right, yeah. so we will sit for about five minutes okay. and not speak and not move and just let nature wash over you I like it. and just soak it all in. This is amazing. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. You're sitting up here with just this, it's like the whole world is unfurling below you. Beyond being physically hard, there's always, to me, sort of a spiritual element to hiking too, sort of getting out in nature. And I just see the, the fingerprint of a loving creator everywhere who sort of made this beautiful world for us to get out and enjoy. So awesome. I'm covered in ladybugs, man. If ladybugs are good luck, this is the luckiest bush in the world. <laughs> this, this mountaintop is the luckiest mountaintop in the world. We need to go buy a lotto ticket, man. It's our lucky day. As much as I would love to hang out here all day, well, we gotta head back down at some point. And man, is it easier hiking downhill. We were just right here. It looks like it's so far away. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, we did that. Now I know that not everyone is up for a multi-hour hike in the desert. So there's another great way to experience the Davis Mountains, all from the convenience of your air-conditioned automobile. And it's called the Scenic Loop. So this drive, the Scenic Loop, often considered the number one drive in Texas. Number one. Number, number one. one. I mean, look around. Can you disagree? I cannot disagree. So we're gonna drive the scenic loop, maybe uh, run into some animals. Run into them? <laughs> okay, we're gonna try to not run into some animals. <laughs> All right, I'm uh, hungry, so I mean, yeah. <laughs> How about just view and observe, as this 75 mile loop takes you up and down and all around the mountains. It's one place where you definitely wanna keep your eyes on the road and on the cliffs, as you're bound to see some amazing animals. Turkeys, javelina, was that a jackalope? There are even herds of wild audad by the hundreds, a mountain goat species from North Africa that's become well adjusted to the Texas lifestyle. Now we're gonna take a slight detour from the loop to visit a town with one of the most romantic names in Texas. Now we love our state, 
And what better way to send it a love letter than with a visit to Valentine? Although it seems the fountain of love has run a bit dry these days. Wow, so this is Valentine, Texas. On February 14th, it's a pretty popular place to be. But the other 364 days out of the year, well, this is what you get. Valentine's population is dwindling. It's been dwindling for decades. And if we lose Valentine, well then, what hope does love have at all in Texas? We can't lose Valentine. We gotta get these people populating. Yeah. It's only love I wanna give you. Close your eyes and make a wish. I'm just gonna concentrate on you. Then hold you tight. I fall in love with you, just you and I. You know I need you, baby, by my side. Hey, Valentine, you're welcome. Now that we've single-handedly saved love and hiked a mountain today, well, I think it's time we find some dinner. Cause there's nothing quite like a rewarding meal after a good long hike. And so we're headed to Fort Davis's Hotel Olympia. Built in 1912 as a summer retreat for cattle ranchers, this hotel still drips with Texas nostalgia. And behind it, hungry travelers will find the Blue Mountain Bar and Grill. This is frontier cuisine at its finest. Seared trout, pulled pork tacos, and monstrous bison burgers. With summer nights being so cool in the mountains, well, this is the best spot for dinner. Here's Chef Ryan Dennis and manager Jeremy Bentley with an incredible spread. A root beer bacon wrapped quail. Oh, dude, that's good. Mm. And then we have an orange marmalade and habanero duck wing. Okay. Just a little play on normal chicken wings. Oh, yeah. Yes, I Screaming love it. Texas. That is, uh, it's even Texas on a Texas sure. platter. Yeah, so, absolutely. of course, yeah. yeah. I come out to Fort Davis, and I love it, and I have sort of trouble describing the vibe to people. After living in a city for so long, it becomes one of those good retreats to just kind of relax and just stop the sort of the monotony of moving. Yeah. And enjoy some of the best weather in Texas. Salud. <laughs> yeah. And for my celebratory dinner, well, I'm going with a different take on a Texas classic. Chicken fried pork tenderloin smothered in pecan glaze. Ooh, man. Here's <laughs> what we're going to do. We're going to get a little of this extra, extra goodness on top of it like that. Oh, son. That's good. Pork tenderloin on its own, if you cook it right, super delicious. Chicken fry it, double delicious. Put a sweet pecan glaze all over the top of it, triple whammy delicious. That's what this is right here. Back in my days in Scouts, you hiked all day, and at the end of the day, you were rewarded with like dehydrated noodles and canned salmon or canned tuna. I must say, this is quite a bit of an upgrade. <laughs> the day trooper says, treat yourself. Mm. With city life sprawling and our world only getting busier, we all need places to escape the madness. Places that take us back to our roots and make us feel small again in this big old world. Places to connect both with nature and the people who join us on the journey. A place to slow down, enjoy the views, breathe the fresh air, and truly remember how good it feels to be alive. You know, sometimes after a long day, all there really is left to do is sit in a rocking chair and stare at them mountains. Them sure are pretty mountains, aren't they? Oh yeah, real pretty, real pretty. So from out here in the Davis Mountains, I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye, con Dios, amigos. Wow, sure is pretty mountains. Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at The Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper.
This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy y'all, Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. <laughs> Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas.